All right, folks, welcome back to Duty's Daggers. We got a review today of this knife right here. This is the Skeleton Blade Works Caladan. And uh, this is uh, a knife that's on loan to the channel. Uh, it's being passed around to uh, a few of us uh, YouTube reviewers. Um, so this was the one that was initially sent to me. Um, and I didn't even notice, but um, I guess uh, he noticed that it was slightly off center, so um, Jim decided to send another one for the the uh, you know to pass around to reviewers. So this is the the new one. I guess we got uh, just regular non-colored carbon fiber on this one, um, and this is the one that's going to be passed around, and this one's going back to him. But we'll have both out just so we can uh, look at both of them. Why not? You know. So. The Skeleton Blade Works Caladan. Um, this is uh, Jim Skelton's first folding knife design. Uh, he's made some fixed blades before. Uh, I think custom fixed blades and a few productions maybe. I don't know too much about him, honestly, but uh, this is his first folding knife design. I do know that. And um, the OEM, so the, the people making actually making the knife is Tuya. You can see right there. There's the Caladan. S90V blade steel. Um, handle material is titanium and marble carbon fiber. This one is the purple phase, uh, purple haze carbon fiber. It looks really cool. This one's just the regular marbled, which looks nice too. So uh, you can see Skeleton Blade Works uh, there on the pivot. Um, I've actually, I've never handled a, a knife from Tuya before. Uh, but I can say that these seem to be really well made. Um, I mean, look how smooth the drop is on this one, on both of them. Really, really smooth. Quite smooth. Everything feels solid. Um, so let's go over this knife here. Construction-wise, actually, you know what? Let's measure it first of all. Getting ahead of myself here already. Blade length. It's a pretty big knife, actually. Just under three and three quarter inch. The handle is about four and three quarter inch. And the uh, overall length is longer than my ruler. So it's probably about, I don't know, eight and three eighths. Almost eight and a half, maybe. Uh, it's pretty long. It's a full-size knife, absolutely. You can see I get a full grip on it with a little extra sticking out the back here. So if you have much larger hands than I will, uh, than I do, um, this will be comfortable for you as well, absolutely. Um, let's measure the thickness behind the edge. Let's see what we're at with that. Beautiful um, hand rubbed satin finish on the blades, by the way. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. So back here, right in front of the sharpening choil, we are looking at... Come on now. Come on, little doggy. 20 thousandths right there. The middle of the blade. Uh, 19 thousandths. And then at the very tip, looks like we get a little bit wider at 22 thousandths. Uh, so that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, I would say, I usually say 20 thousandths is kind of like on the thicker side of uh, a good thin edge on an EDC knife. But that being said, you know, the Benchmade Griptilian is like 28, almost 30 thousandths behind the edge. So that's on the much thicker side. Um, a very thin measurement behind the edge for an EDC knife would be like 12 thousandths. So um, this is not bad. Uh, 18 thousandths, not too bad. Um, could be thinner, absolutely. But... Um, not uh, too, too thick either. The construction, actually, you know what? Let's do a couple of size comparisons first, then we'll talk about the construction. How does that sound? The factor, Winter Blade Co. Factor, there you go. How about the uh, Riot XOM? Right there for you. Let's do the CJRB Pyrite. Could be Momentum. 
that I am making uh, aluminum scales for right now. Super stoked on that. They're not perfect by any means, but um, sure feels nice. Alrighty, so there you go. Let's talk about the construction. 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 We have inlays, or I guess overlays, on both sides that uh, seem to be done very well. Um, this seam up here, uh, I can feel a little bit right back here, but it's really, really well done. Um, don't see any gap in there. Hardly, hardly even feel any gap. Um, that is true for both sides. And back here where it meets the titanium, that feels good. Um, we have a titanium backspacer with uh, kind of a, these slots milled in to give you a place for a lanyard. I like how they did that. That's kind of a nice way to not affect the ergos at all, but to still have a spot for the lanyard folks. The pocket clip is a full uh, 3D milled titanium pocket clip. Um, I've only taken this uh, in and out of the pocket a few times, but it seems to work fine. Oh yeah, let me mention that too. So since this is a pass around knife, uh, I don't own it. Uh, I'm not going to do a full cut test uh, video or, you know, any extensive cut testing with the knife. Um, it's, it's not mine, so I, I can't really do that. Um, I have done some light cutting with this guy. A little bit of cardboard, a little bit of paper. Carried it around for a few days um, to get a feel for it. But this is, uh, this is not like an extensive cutting, uh, cutting test review, so keep that in mind. Um... What are they saying? Oh yeah, the pocket clip goes in and out of the pants pretty easy. Um, we have T6 on the clip screws and also t oh, we got T6 on the body screws too. Nah, that kind of sucks. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't just do T8s, you know? Um, we do have a T8 on the pivot, but uh, we got T6s um, on the body screws on the clip. Um, this is a frame lock that is, uh, you know, the lock bar is almost totally covered up by this inlay or overlay, sorry. Uh, some people call it a bolster lock. It's really just a frame lock that um, is, you know, partly covered up by the overlay. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of, this is kind of cool how they did it. Uh, a lot of times when um, designers do this, they will leave, um, you know, this is a, an example of something very similar. They will leave uh, kind of the, the edge of the lock bar still exposed. Which um, functionally really doesn't matter because it's it's you know uh, really the okay let me <laughs> let me start over the benefit of having an overlay covering part of your lock bar is you don't have to make sure you're not putting pressure on it when you're flipping it you're not locking yourself out a lot of times with exposed frame locks you go to flip it it's not flipping it's, it feels like it's the blade is stuck in there well you look and you see oh. I was putting pressure down on the lock bar, forcing that detent back into its hole and making it so that you couldn't flip the blade out. Um, that happens uh, frequently with uh, exposed frame locks. So that's, not, that's why it's nice to have an overlay or inlay uh, covering up part of the lock bar. So you can just put your fingers kind of wherever and not have to worry about it. So you can see um, most of the time, I would say, um, they leave the kind of the corner exposed. This one um, is completely exposed, except for the very top here. That's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know, like I said, functionally, if that makes a huge difference, but um, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. You know, it's worth worth noting. Um, let's see. We have, speaking of the inside, we have, I don't know why I just said speaking of the inside. We weren't even talking about the inside. <laughs> but we have no milling on the inside, um, which, I don't know, the knife doesn't feel like overly heavy to me, though. So I guess they probably couldn't put much in. Well, I guess I was going to say because of the overlay, they didn't have much titanium left. That's probably why they didn't. Since we have this huge um, uh, overlay inlay, um, you know, this, all this titanium is half thickness back here. You can see where it goes uh, from full thickness to half thickness. So that's probably why it just feels pretty light still. That's probably why they didn't do the, the milling on the inside. Um, the blade, M, uh, S90V blade with a really nice um, 
uh, hand rubbed satin finish on it. It looks really, really good. Really, really good. Love it, love it, love it. Excellente. Uh, the blade shape itself I like. Um, nice big old swedge running uh, across the top here. Almost all the way. Um, flat grind right here. Spear point, eh, spear point, drop point blade, what do you want to call it? Um, the sharpening choil is uh, less than ideal, uh, definitely less than ideal. You can see our edge termination right there, and it's already getting thick right there. You can see um, the plunge grind is already, it's, it's right there. So even after the very first time you sharpen this, it would take away any amount of steel. Uh, this bevel in here is going to start getting wider. You can see it already is a little bit wider back there. Let's see how the other side is. Yep, it's already getting wider back there. See how it's it's consistently uh, even, and then whoop, it starts getting thick right there. That's because this plunge grind is starting to um, you know slope up. It's getting thick. I just made a video about uh, sharpening choils and plunge grinds and how to spot a good or bad one. If you're, um, if you don't really know a whole lot about that, um, watching my video would be very beneficial because I was pretty confused on it for a pretty long time actually. Um, it's it's confusing if you hear reviewers talk about you know edge terminations and plunge lines and plunge grinds. It's it's confusing. So if you want to watch my video and uh, it'll explain everything. But this is what happens when we have um, a poorly placed um, plunge grind that uh, ends in the sharpening choil that's uh, it's too far this way. Um, we want the, where it starts getting thick on the plunge grind, we want it to be way back this way, away from where our edge ends right here. Uh, so that's not great. In fact, it's pretty bad, to be honest. Um, the fact that it's already getting thick right here uh, just from its initial sharpening, uh, that that says all you need to know right there. Um, it's just going to get worse and worse as you sharpen it. Um, so that's one downside to the knife. Um, the lock bar access is great. You can see uh, how much room you got right there. Perfect. They also added some little uh, grippy stuff right on there. That's kind of cool. I like how that looks. It's not just like regular jimping, it's like, I don't know, I don't even know what you would call that. But it looks cool, feels good disengaging it. Um, ergos, very, very, very good. Really, really comfy, man. Um, you kind of, you just get this little palm swell effect right here. It just feels nice, feels really nice. Um, we got this little protrusion right here that we'll talk about more in a minute, but uh, as far as the ergonomics go, it feels really good, kind of being braced up against, um, right up in that little, you know, this little finger groove right here. It feels good. We got the palm swell. And if you had bigger hands than I did, like if they came back to here, it almost leaves you like a little spot for your pinky right in here. This is kind of like a little pinky spot. So if you had much bigger hands than I, your hands would be back here, and it's still pretty comfortable. Um, I do feel the clip, but it doesn't feel like a hot spot. You know, everything's nicely rounded over. Um, I don't, I don't, I could tell it's there, but uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't strike me as a, a hot spot at all. Um, so ergonomics, really good. Um, and that's basically the construction of the knife. Um, we can talk about action. Um, the shutting action, or the, you know, the drop shutness is uh, quite good. Very, very good. I think this one's even slightly better because it's probably uh, broken in a little bit by now. They're both very good though. Very, very good. Uh, this is a flipper only knife uh, and the D10 is not great. Uh, it's okay. It's definitely okay. Uh, I could definitely fail it though. And I'm not cheating. You know? Um, but you give it a little bit of uh, gusto and it flips out pretty, pretty fine, you know? Um, especially if you give it just a little bit of wrist, pops out. But same on both of these. Uh, now, um, I heard someone talking about that they had a one of the full titanium versions, and uh, their detent was uh, really strong. 
so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know why the titanium ones would be stronger. Um, but these now I, I've experienced two of these now, which is you know, it's impossible to make detents all exactly the same across a, a batch of knives, especially a large batch. Um, but I'm judging by two that I have here, and um, detents are, are nothing to write home about, for sure. Uh, but like I said, meaningful flip or flick, um, it deploys pretty easily. And like I said, the shutting action, butter smooth. Butter, butter, butter smooth. So, um, what else? That's the action. Um, let's talk about what I... When I think about the knife, um, I'm not, I don't, I don't like this design. Uh, I, I just don't. I, I hate to be um, blunt about it. I don't like this design. Um, I think I like the blade if it was on a different handle, maybe. Um, you know, as far as the ergonomics, this is a great handle. As far as the aesthetics and how it looks, I don't like it. I don't like this beak right here. Um, it's covering up the flipper tab, which is uh, probably why it's there. Um, but I don't see any benefit of wanting to cover up the, fip, the flipper tab. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It's not like you could choke up now that it's covered or, um, or anything like that. Um, maybe it helps with the ergonomics a little bit. Um, maybe it does, you know, kind of where your, your finger rests up against there possibly. I just think it looks, it looks weird. Um, someone told me that it looks like a parrot, like sitting on a branch kind of. <laughs> it totally does. Um, I'm just not a fan of the, uh, of the design. I, I'm really not. Um, you know, um, let's check the lockup. Yeah, solid as a rock, perfectly centered. Um, yeah, so anyways, yeah, I just, I'm not a fan. I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy this knife. Um, it seems well made, for sure. Um, but uh, just uh, aesthetically, it's not my thing. Um but if it's your thing, that's fine, you know? More power to you. I'm just giving you my opinion on it. Um, I don't know what there was to gain by, by covering up that, uh, that flipper tab. I might even like it if that was gone, possibly, you know? If that was just gone and you just saw the flipper tab there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, just not really my thing. But uh, that's okay. Everyone's entitled to their, their personal opinions. As far as the knife being a knife, um, I think it's a, it's a well-made knife with a, uh, not a very good sharpening choil and um, not a super great detent, um, at least on these versions that, I'm, um, that I have in front of me. And aside from that, it seems like a very well-made knife that um, will, will function very well. So there you go. That's the uh, Skeleton Blade Works Caladan. Um, yeah, there you go, dudes. I'll put a link to uh, his website. I believe he has a website for these. I'll put a link to that down below. Uh, at least I'll, I'll put a link to wherever you can get them. I'll, I'll do that. I'm not sure if it's on his website or, or, or where it is, but I'll put a link to that down below along with some other links for you guys. And um, that's it. Love y'all. Peace and love.